Well, hello once again, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great. It's time for another one of my little back to basics videos. This time we're going to be talking about toggle switches. But before I get started, I would like to do my little disclaimer, as you all well know by now. So the information that I'm going to be presenting to you here on this video, it's my personal understanding of the material is, you know, whatever knowledge I already have about the components that I'm talking about, what I've read on the Hixi website, you know, so I always recommend that you guys visit the website for the latest and greatest information and to download the latest version of the plugin. Speaking of the plugin, uh, as of the day of this recording, I am using version 1.0.75 and the website, whatever parts I do show of it, is going to be the way they, it looked on May 6, 2021. So if you are looking at this video sometime way in the future, maybe some things have already changed as you guys all know everything is subject to change all right so let's go ahead and get started with this little video about toggle switches but before we go any further let me get myself out of the shot here so that we can have more room to do the explanation all right so toggle switches come in a great variety of different sizes uh, different configurations uh, you can see that we have some here that look like um, rocker switches. We have a push button latching switch, which is like I talked about in the previous video, to the configurator, to the plug-in. It looks like a toggle switch. And then this is your basic um, uh, on and off switch, the, the very, very basic one. And so is this one, but this one has a longer uh, handle here, a lever. Okay, as I mentioned, you can get these toggle switches in a wide variety of formats. And um, this one right here, I kind of like it because it has a pretty big um, handle lever on it. So you can actually attach things to it. Like a long time ago, uh, when I just started my cockpit, I actually put something, I made something like this so that I can put that there. And that used to be my autopilot uh, disengage little thing. So, you know, you can get creative and do whatever you want. And then you got some here that have a integrated light built in, but I believe these lights are for, cause these are originally for cars. So they're 12 volt lights. So they, they don't really work for the simulator. Um, same thing with this one here. It's a rocker switch that also has, you know, a light built in, but when you try to hook up the light, if you ever try to hook up the light, like to work as an led output, it'll actually short. Um, the Arduino so you can use the light built into these um, for the Arduino All right, and then you got um, You got some pretty nice little tiny ones here So you can use these for the ones that are on, on the EFIS panel so that you can switch between VOR and ADF um, So as you might notice um, you got three different types right here so this one right here is your basic on and off switch and actually might be able to see it i'm not sure if it'll show or not but you might be able to see right there that it says on off and then these two right here this is a little bit different right here because this one right here you know it has three legs and like i mentioned i think before usually the negative is the center and then the two on the outside are the contacts for the two different poles so this one is actually just on on it doesn't have a center position even though it has two different poles or throws actually one throw and two poles um i don't know if you can see that right there i'm trying to make it come up but trust me it says on on but this one right here even though it's the same it has uh you know two two poles and then the, the negative and the center this one actually has a center so you can actually go on off on and uh yeah, you might be able to, to read it right there as well. All right, so when you're looking for switches, you kind of have to be careful. You have to kind of want to know what you are looking for. So like if you're using for your everyday things, you know, where just have an on and off, you're going to get one of these, which is a basic, you know, on off. And all of these have, you know, one for the ground or the common and then one for the contact. Um, so the way that you can tell where it's going to be on is if you imagine there's a straight line right here between the lever and right here, 
you see there's no contact there so that would be in the off position but when you throw it if you draw a line you see that it's making contact with a with a wire there so that's going to be your on position and it also says it right there maybe you can pick that one up but just in case you didn't know you know usually when when the little uh, lever is pointing towards the wire that's going to be the on position so where that comes in kind of important is when you try to use these right here so this one right here you can see that it has uh, four terminals so this is a special kind of switch actually because um, the center like I said it's almost always going to be the common and then you're going to have other locations for for the contacts this one is kind of interesting because it's like right now you know it's, it's like this so right now it's, it's pointing towards that side so this is one of the ons and then if you go to the middle it's actually on with this contact right here and then if I go to the other side it's on with this one right here if you ever wanted to find out how you can where you know what the the positions are here um, you can always put the meter in continuity mode so you can uh, you know check if there's contact and then of course you would put you know one of your leads on the ground and then where you have the switch right now for example I know that is this one so if I touch it you can see that there's continuity in this one if I was to try to do this one it doesn't have anything and if I did the one on the bottom it doesn't have anything now if I put it in the middle if I touch the bottom one on that side it doesn't have any continuity this one doesn't either but this one does so this switch is kind of interesting because you can actually use it as an on 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 but in Hixie the only thing that you would really be able to do with it is to use it as a multi position switch that would have three positions you wouldn't be able to use it for anything that uses a toggle a three position toggle switch and I'll explain that right now now if I go to the bottom the, the bottom position here is going to be the one on the bottom you see that and you can try the other ones and it doesn't have anything so sometimes when you do get switches like this one that is that is different that it has a whole bunch of contacts um, that's how you can figure out you know what position is is what um, now as I mentioned before you can actually buy switches like these in many different configuration so you can buy on off switches which is the normal ones you can buy on 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 off on switches you know like let's just pretend that actually this is this one right here so this is just a regular on off on switch you can actually get them like the little one that I showed you here which is just on on it doesn't have a center position and along with those lines um, they also do sell some that are um, off on on or different combinations thereof but for the purposes of um, of Hixie here you're really only going to buy the regular standard ones here or you're going to want something like this one which is a on off on because that's the way the configurator expects it so I'm going to show you a little bit later that even for things like the APU which um, I am using this switch right here when we when we do some programming a little bit later um, even though you would expect okay when when it's like this the APU is off when it's on the top and it's in the on position when it's in the middle and then you push down to start it and then you know I, I have one in my setup where, where it bounces back so I just basically have to momentarily hold it and when I let it go it bounces back to the on position and then when I want to turn off the APU uh, I turn it up but the, the configurator and the software it it doesn't care that the switch is off in the middle because of the logic that they put into it it expects um, the on position up here to be APU off and then the off position here the APU turns on and then the on position on the bottom is the start so if it wasn't because of the logic that they put into it then you know if there was some other way of doing it I guess then you would need a off on on switch but that's not the case alright so another thing is that if you do get um little switches like this one right here like a rocker um, you know these are normal on and off switches here but they do sell some that are basically centered 
they're kind of centered and then you can momentarily push it to one way or the other and so that's kind of cool like for the the trim buttons you know on, on airliners or, or business jets or any other airplane that has something like that where you can trim left or trim right or trim up or trim down with the buttons on the yoke that's kind of cool for that I don't have any of those so I'm not able to show you but they exist so I mean the the combinations of things that you can do are pretty much endless you know you just have to uh, use your imagination and do whatever you want to do one of the very important things that I wanted to talk about is that when you are mounting your switches remember I, I talked about how you need to kind of know um, what you know which position is on so like for example if you wanted to mount you know this switch this is going to be the on position if you mount it like this so so when you have it mounted you know it's going to be off when it's up and then it's going to be on when it's down but let's say you wanted to do it in, in a way that you know that it's on when the switch is actually facing up like that then you need to make sure when you mount them that you put them in the right orientation on your panels um, it also becomes important with with these kind of switches that have you know the two positions because let's say if you put it like this and now you know you have it backwards where with the way you connected the wires you're gonna basically have like this is gonna be the AP you start when the switch is up and then when you're in the middle it's still gonna be on but then when you go down that's gonna be off which is totally the opposite of the way it is in the 737 so you need to make sure that you that you mount in the right way now there's a good thing about it that with this type of switch you can just reverse the leads so like if you connected let's say this one to a8 and this one to a9 you can just swap them and it would be the same thing as if you rotated the switch um, but let's say you soldered everything in place there is a cool thing in the configurator where it allows you to do an inversion so even if you did already wire them and solder them and even if you already mounted your switch and and it would be very difficult for you to you know reorient it you can just do it in the software you know so that's a very good thing that they just added recently so let's go ahead and connect a couple of these and then we're going to go to the to the configurator all right so I'm just going to do three of them for this and I'm going to use the latching push button one like I did last time just so you can see that in this episode that it's, it's talking about switch toggle switches. So I'm going to go ahead and put my grounds right here and just to make it easy I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to put it on since I already kind of mentioned it I'm going to put this on A8 and A9 directly on the Arduino all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this one since it has a a mail on the end over here I'll just go ahead and put my common to ground it's the same way I do all the time and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this one I'll put it on number 50 okay oh well all right and then this one here uh, it has a female here so I'm just gonna go ahead and put my common to ground and then put this one on the multiplexer number 15 that should be good enough um, you know there's something I haven't mentioned before and I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious to almost everybody especially if you've already done a little bit of this but you know right here I have obviously different uh, commons you know for each switch but when you're building something you know like for example when I built this little thing here that I was talking about last time um, you can see that all the grounds are together all the grounds come you know you basically link them with a black wire they're linked between the even between the displays between the encoder and everything every all the grounds are linked together and then they just go you know to to the whole the same ground um, which comes over here to the multiplexer that I have right here and then I just take this ground wire here that's gonna go to my Arduino and then the same thing for the power you know anything that uses power 
or the five volts like the displays it's they're all linked together and then I just take one power to the displays I'm sorry to the Arduino okay so you don't need to do you know one ground for every single button you just daisy chain all of them together to make the wiring a little bit neater I think I had never mentioned that before so I figured it was a good thing to do that we're gonna go to the configurator here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do the APU for the three position toggle switch so I would go I, they're kind of uh, populating these things already uh, last time when I clicked on it here well never mind I guess I shouldn't have said it oh yeah there it is I thought it was gone all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one here for the APU. And you can see that it's expecting a three position switch. And I put them right here on A8 and A9. So I'm gonna click the first of two inputs. So that's already assigned. And then the other one, the, the single toggle switch that I was gonna do for the, I believe I was gonna do that for the auto throttle. So we'll go to the autopilot types It's taking quite a long time to load right now. Oh, there we go. I have to click it again. All right, so we'll click on this auto throttle arm and we're gonna put that on number 50. So that's done. And then the push button that I put, I think I put on multiplexer eight on pin number 15. So first I have to tell this thing that I want a multiplexer here on number eight. And then, um, for that one, we'll go back to the 737. And I'm just going to do uh, the pitot heat switch right here. And I'll put that on number 15. And the reason I'm doing that, like I said last time, is to show you that a latching push button switch acts the same as a toggle switch to the configurator and to the plugin. All right, so that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. I'm going to overwrite the one I had in there and then let's go to the to explain we're here in explain now and as you can see we have uh, version 1.0.75 I'm going to go ahead and unpause it and reload the configuration so that it can do the one that I just put in there all right so it's detecting that we have three inputs and zero outputs which is correct all right, so now that I got the camera here, let's go ahead and try, well, let's go ahead and do the APU first. So let me come this way a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna pretend that this is the way I, I have it right now. So the APU is off right there. And then if I bring it to the middle, the APU went to the middle position. And then if I go down, it goes to the start position and then I can bring it back to the on position after a couple of seconds. So that is, um, that is correct. Okay, the next one we're gonna try out here is gonna be the auto throttle here. So let me move that here. So right now the auto throttle is on. So I'm gonna just pretend that this is gonna be in the up position and then I turn it off. Turn it on, turn it off. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I was talking about the inversion options. So if you go to the plugins, Hixi, and input options, you get this window here. And as soon as you click on something, you'll get this thing. So you see how you have a inversion checkbox right here? So I had it on already, but so you would imagine right now you see this is off and this is on. So I'm going that way to go on and then this way to go off. So if I take off the invert and if I save it again, you would expect now that because I inverted it, now this would be on and this would be off, but it's not, it's still the same. So it's not working with uh, regular on and off switches, it's not working. But now let's go to the APU here Okay, so if we go to the APU switch here, um, okay, right now we're gonna go like this. So right now, for the APU, um, the top position here is 
off the middle position is on and the bottom over here would be start so if I was to go there you see it goes to on and then if I go down it goes to the start so remember right now this is off now if I click the inversion away all right now you see it went to the on position even though I have it in the in the other one so it's going to stay the same but now if I go down now you see how it goes off so you can see that if it's actually the opposite now of what I'm doing with the switch so if I go up one it goes down one on the simulator and then if I go all the way to the top it goes down to start so that is what this inversion thing is useful for if you wire your wires backwards or if you mount it um, upside down in your panel so that is very good to have all right now we're gonna go to the very top up here and we're gonna go to the the pedal heat Oops. all right so we're gonna go to the pedal heat with this push button so right now you can see that the pedal heat is off because my little switch is um, out but if I push it in my pedal heat is on so once again like I said before even though this is a push button it is a latching push button so to the configurator and to the plugin it looks like a toggle switch so you can just um, toggle it off and then you can toggle it on okay so I guess this is gonna be it for this video hopefully it cleared up any doubts or confusions or questions that you may have had about using toggle switches and um, I don't know I'm pretty pretty sure I missed something but I took notes and I tried to cover everything that I could think of so hopefully I did a good job or good enough at least uh, and if you guys have any questions or anything that I missed or you still have uh, doubts about let me know in the comments down below so yeah that's gonna be it for this one and uh, I will see you on the next one thanks for watching